Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to A Gathering Place, brought to you by the Gullah Geechee Chamber of Commerce, and I'm your hostess, Marilyn Hemingway, and I'm so excited, as I usually am, when I bring on Victoria Smalls, Executive Director of the Gullah Geechee Cultural Heritage Corridor Commission. That's a mouthful, and it's a mouthful because they do a lot, folks. They do a lot. So, so the name is very appropriate. I'm very excited to have her here, as usual. We're going to find out what's going on up and down the Gullah Geechee corridor with the events, our communities, the things that help the community and things and happenings that the community is producing because we are at ever evolving and foundational culture. And I'm just always excited to be Gullah Geechee. So we're going to get rolling right after this opening. Hello, I'm Marilyn Hemingway and welcome to A Gathering Place. I said, I'm stepping back because we have young voices who want to be heard and they're moving on something. Branding is really important to you and your business. Even a basic type of technology, you learn it all. Good question. Well, folks, we have a lot to talk about, so let's just go ahead and get started. And welcome, Victoria Smalls. <laughs> Hi, Marilyn. How are you? Hello. I'm good. Thank you very much. And hello, everyone that's joining us. I really appreciate the invitation, as always. I promised that I would come back. You gave a wonderful invitation, and I, I pray that I will be able to continue to come back and share some good news or, or what's happening around the corridor. Well, we certainly want you to, so you know you're always welcome. So come on back when you got stuff to tell us and update us and everything. And you know, I just realized, so everybody, we did talk before the show, just to catch up what we're going to talk about and everything. I just realized, Victoria, that we must have gotten the memo because both of us have yellow on today. Oh, yes. <laughs> it just hit me. I'm like, oh, okay, we're both wearing a variation of yellow here, which is yes. a beautiful, bright, happy color it so, is joyful yes it is yes it is so we love yellow and i'm glad we in tune today but we yes. got a lot to talk about and we want to start with um every quarter the commission meets and it's coming up now so can we talk about the upcoming meeting and also why does the commission meet oh yes so um, we have two things happening within the gullah Geechee corridor office we have our federal commissioners the Gullah Geechee Cultural Heritage Corridor. And these individuals are experts, scholars, grassroots experts um, that really help meet the needs within our communities, help us have farther reach. Someone that I, our office can depend on to reach out to, um, to provide introductions, to identify us um, with the new partners. And so um, it's really important to have these commissioners because two full-time people in the office and two part-time people in the office, just four, cannot do the great work of 12,000 square miles of this national heritage area for, across the four states. And then also they're just, they're experts and scholars, number one, number two. So who better to have on your side um, in your community that you can reach out to? So one of the things that we do within the corridor, we know that it's important to hear from our people, our communities, our partners and potential partners, even government agency entities, um, local state government, national government. Um, it's really important to hear about the challenges that we are facing and um, challenges that are mounting unabated daily on a daily basis. Um, you're aware of that. We're aware of that. The listeners um, today are, are aware of that. And some of them may be facing these problems. So mm -hmm. we gather these, we convene these meetings once a quarter in each state. So you have one meeting a year in North Carolina, one in South Carolina, Georgia, and Florida. So it's important to go to where the people are, mm -hmm. to hear, to hear what they have to say. So 
this is a commission's meeting. I give an executive director report to the community and to the commissioners during this meeting, but it's their meeting. And so we are there to, to give that report and then also to support our community members while they're there, introduce ourselves. We're, I'm, I'm still, I'm just a little over a year in this position, Marilyn. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. We've been doing a lot. We've been doing a lot. You hit the ground and running. I, I took off like Flo Jo. Mm -hmm. Flo Jo, the Olympic sprinter. Yes, that's resting in heaven. And so, but there's still a lot of work to do. There's so much work to do, as you can attest to, um, with your daily calls and emails and, and pleas for help. We get the same. And so it's really good that we can partner with the Delegate Chamber of Commerce so that um, we can have further reach. So at the meeting, um, that's going to take place this, uh, well, yeah, this month. No, well, tomorrow. Tomorrow will be this month. month. Yeah. <laughs> I'm already working ahead. So my mind goes ahead a, a day or two or five. Um, so that's going to be taking place in the North Carolina coastal area, southern coastal area. Um, September 23rd for the business meeting, which means that's where the corridor commissioners are going to um, talk about all of the business workings that are happening, whether that's partnership applications, whether that is talking about in depth, um, going over our financials, um, a lot more than that, a lot more being, making sure that we get our, they get their ethics trainings, making sure also that, um, we hear from them on the a state level. So then on Saturday the 24th, we open this up to the public and pretty much do some of the same things so that the public is aware of what the commission is doing and what the corridor office is doing. So we want to invite everyone because it will be a hybrid event program. So even if you're not from North Carolina, you may want to go. So we'll make sure that we get that information out in advance, we did put out a short little email letting you know that data has changed because it was supposed to take place this weekend. But because of Labor Day weekend, the availability uh, for meeting space and accommodations were skyrocket high and pretty much non-existent because it's still a last weekend before some school schools begin in some areas. So we had to regroup really quickly and identified September 23rd for the business meeting and September 24th for the public meeting. And we hope that you will attend. When you receive a invitation by email, um, we will also have a meeting link in there that you can register for. And then also the meeting location if you would like to join us in person. We hope that you will do, I, do both, uh, not both, one or the other. Well, I've done both at different meetings. <laughs> You've done a lot. You've yeah, and I've actually presented. Yeah, I've actually presented. So if anybody wants to present, it's not scary. <laughs> it's a good we time. Invite you to even present again because you can part. You can present at every at every quarterly meeting. Yeah, I got. I have a lot going on. So when you say there's a lot going on, I totally understand that there's uh -huh. a lot going on, and there's a lot going on. And I want people to understand it's not busy work. There's a lot going on because our community has so many opportunities in front of it. That's why mm -hmm. the work is being done. Right. Um, and, and, and I love the commission meetings because it's a chance for the community members and the greater public to come and learn more about what's mm -hmm. going on in the local communities and in, in the greater community, got to get your community, but also all our, our communities throughout the corridor that's that have right. their own things going on. It's a good way to get the word out. And, and meet the officials, thing. meet these federal mm -hmm. commissioners that can help do, help, help support you and advocate for you. Yeah. We're here for that also, but then get to meet your commissioners. That's they're right. your commissioners. Yeah. They're our commissioners and they're here to do work and be a service to our Gullah Geechee community. Yeah. So that you can pick up right. the phone and ask questions or get, mm -hmm. and just get some support or access mm -hmm. to resources. And that's why we're yes. here doing the work. We that's do. one of our best um, aspects is our partnerships and how we can leverage um, networking and resources. So somebody may call us regarding needing a lawyer for their land issue, property issue. No, we don't have a lawyer in house. 
Um, however, we, there's organ, multiple organizations that we work with that can assist with those things. Um, Very good. You're concerned Wonderful. about climate, all of these things. We can definitely point you in the right direction. Then also, if you need advocacy, help. Yeah, let us um, come and speak up to your local local government and get some work done for you. That's right. So September 23rd, 24th, um, mm -hmm. it's going to be in North Carolina. The email went out, but I'm scrolling at the bottom of the screen the entire show, folks, where you can sign up for the newsletter so you can stay on top of all the commission meetings and happenings in the corridor. Go ahead and sign up for the newsletter um, at galagichicorridor.org and you'll stay on top of everything. And it usually yes, includes the newsletter too. So, <laughs> Yeah, we try to incorporate art. Which we, we want to make it pretty. We want to show you what's happening in each state. Um, we want to we want to give you a notice from the commission and what they're doing. Some of the maybe some of the grants we're partnering on. Just a lot of information and also edutainment. So don't think that you know festivals are just fun and it, it's a lot of fun. We want it to be fun, but we also want it to be educating. We want it to be nurturing. We want it to uplift um, our economic empowerment within That's our right. communities. Mm -hmm. So it's much more when you see a festival support it in some way. If you can't attend, share it. Share That's it right. so that you can help our communities in a, in a great way. Yeah. You're helping and another way, businesses also. Absolutely. So another way you can get the most up-to-date information is also on our Facebook page, the Gullah Geechee Cultural Heritage Corridor, National Heritage Area. As you said earlier, it's a mouthful, um, but definitely even more up-to-date there, or just give us you know, a call. That's right. I forgot about mm -hmm. the Facebook page, but yeah, that's kept yeah. up-to-date also, folks. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Beautiful pictures. They're both just really a celebration of the culture and information also go mm -hmm. to the website and you see it at the bottom of your screen and then also go to um the facebook page so you mentioned climate so mm. what we mm. wanted to talk about because climate is impacting us with rising waters mm -hmm. um increased hurricane activity increased flooding mm -hmm. as we are directly in the path because we are a coastal community so right. these factors impact us. So one of the federal agencies that can help us is FEMA. And you have mm -hmm. a little bit of information to give us. So if you oh, have wow. a partnership, let them know that they can come on the show too. You know, Ooh, let them know that they are yes. to come on the show. But you Thank want you. to give us some information. I'm writing that down. Especially because um, traditionally September, which starts tomorrow, it really, the hurricane season kind of heats up. People don't realize that, you know, Andrews came through in August in Florida. Hugo came late September. You know, big hurricanes and hurricanes are getting bigger and broader and wider because of climate change. So we need to be on top of it. And you have a little bit of FEMA news. Let me share that page. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. what's going on with FEMA? Wow. So we know that... As you said, our coastal, our whole National Heritage Corridor from North Carolina all the way down is can be hit, 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 hit mm -hmm. by natural our natural disasters that are actually getting even worse because of climate, of the climate crisis. I, I mean, so we got to think about relief, you know, being so important. You hope that you don't need relief, but there are times where it's necessary. Nobody wants to have to receive relief, but it's definitely necessary. I'm going to read a little bit about what it says, what you may not be able to see. And so though families who live in these areas are subject to hurricanes, flooding, tornadoes, and other natural disasters, all too, we are all too aware of the need for risk planning. So not only do you need to have something for recovery to help, you know, help you for relief, but you also have to um, uh, be aware of the planning. So even in our newsletter, at the bottom of our newsletter, you will see what you need to do. And we've been putting this out since um, June or July, maybe even May. Yeah, you, yeah, you guys have been putting it out consistently. So each, for each state, your information about hurricanes and what you can do 
um, to plan for it. So please look at our website, not our, yeah, go to our website and sign up for the newsletter so that you can still get that information. So we know that the, um, the Gullah Geechee Corridor and the Federal Emergency Management Agency, FEMA, um, we partner to provide this announcement of changes to the policies and procedures for requesting assistance. We've gone through at our commission meetings and other public meetings, and we can see in the news, we have seen in the news that many community members nationwide, but it also especially in this hurricane um, flooding zone that we have in the corridor, we've seen that many of our community members have struggled with getting help. Maybe because of heirs property or because they've been rejected and for many different things. So this is a, is a 14 page update that we kind, we've got the information from FEMA. And we're so grateful from, um, for our representative, a liaison that used to work with FEMA. He's working with us, Mr. Melvin Hollis. And he's been just exceptional as far as working with us. And FEMA has selected the Gullah Geechee Corridor to put this information out and send it out. So um, this update explains the common terms FEMA uses in documents and highlights the changes that benefit, that benefit owners and residents of heirs property and who may, who may need help. So we have also provided a simplified explanation of how to apply for assistance and even how to navigate when you have been declined or put on hold. Um, that's not, you've gotten a rejection letter. And sometimes, often the rejection letter doesn't mean that your case is closed. It means that you have to provide some more information. But I don't, we community members said, but a rejection letter says re you're rejected. So why do I need to read any further? So maybe they needed to change the terminology there so that, you know, in layman's terms and Gullah terms, <laughs> we will know what that means. So this yeah. is a 14-page document and instructions on what to do. It's long, but we prettied it up. We curated it in a better way. So we put some images that were meaningful to our community we made the font bigger where it needed to be. We just made it a little bit easier in terms for us to digest, for me to digest. 14 pages is a lot. And it so lot. there are some things in here, like there's some of the terms that, that what you need to do. I need help, what will FEMA do? So one of the things is they still want to talk about uh, proof of ownership is being required for home repair. So you need to make sure that when you have your hurricane and flooding plan in your, your boxes or storm boxes that you're putting together, make sure you have copies of your documents in there so that you can pr prove um, proof of ownership, um, home replacement assistance and permanent housing construction, all these different things that they provide. So if you cannot, provide or produce um, ownership documentation, FEMA may accept, accept a self-declaration statement. And that just means that you're describing how long you've lived at, at an address. And, um, and that explains why you don't have the doc necessary documents for home ownership. So then it also goes into home ownership, the things that you need. But what we find on heirs' property is that you don't have that single document. And so applicants, as long as you can verify um, occupancy with the utility bill, phone, cable, medical bills, employer pay stubs that has your address on it, all kinds of things, your ID. So this is going to, I don't, I'm not a FEMA um, expert or staff person. So I have not been, I've gone through some meetings with them, but I am not their uh, official spokesperson, although they did work with the Gullah Corridor to put these, put this announcement out. So I don't want to um, put the cart before the horse because FEMA wants to come into the communities and go over this document as well with the Gullah Geechee Corridor. So we're really grateful that 
FEMA has heard our pleas and the challenges that have been faced, we've been facing within the Gullah Geechee Corridor mm -hmm. with Ayers property owners. Um, so we're just really grateful that they, they made some policy changes and some things have stayed the same, but some things have really changed for the better. And definitely describing, you know, even just the terms that go over my head and, and, and it, like a little glossary and explanation of what those terms mean. So um, the corridor is going to be working with FEMA to offer information session, sessions in Gullah Geechee communities. So um, I would love for people to reach out to us to share maybe where they would like those. Not everyone goes to the house of worship or church. So maybe there's another place in which they would like to see those meetings happen. Of course, FEMA can't go into every single community. So we're going to have to think about how we distribute this information, Marilyn, getting our community leaders together and talk about how we can get this information out to them. Well, one example um, in Georgetown, the Gullah Geechee Chamber, because this is where we're headquarters, uh, headquartered, I, um, we have a strong relationship collaborative partnership with uh, the NWCP. Yes. Uh, there's a group called Club 142, great volunteers, um, some other community organizations that we all collaborative work, collaboratively work together. So if I get the information, I make sure they get the information. And even when it came to the vaccinations yeah. uh, with COVID, what was the other thing we was big? Um, Voter registration yeah. is another big thing that we have <laughs> that we've worked together and we have a group where we even have phone banks okay. knocking on doors to get to people. <clears throat> so I'm hoping and I say this to say in our communities, if you um and thank you, Mayor Frank McClary of Andrews, you would be happy to host FEMA there. Yes, he has another partner of ours in the town of Andrews okay. um, offering to help. We can get the information to him. You get it to me, or get it directly to the town of Andrews. We will definitely. He's a great partner with mm -hmm. us. Um, I, we and, have, of course, you know, we have four states. We have twenty-seven counties, and just think about how many municipalities, how many towns, mm -hmm. and mayors are within that twenty-seven. Yeah. So this is really helpful, and thank you so much, Mayor, um, to be one of the first, actually, to to offer this assistance. Thank you so much and support. So I wrote this down and- um, and, and we'll we help you with gonna... others also because the NWCP, we have a strong branch mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. um, we'll be able to get it to other branches in other counties. Yeah, also. and I'm thinking about- And I know we're just councils. a small part of it. And this is why we all yeah. need to step up and the churches and the NWCP and civic yes groups, and other, other civic priorities. social organizations mm -hmm. even our mm -hmm. panhellenic councils yes yes even oh. them so it's just a matter because this is a lot this is a lot to digest it and is. I'm I'm thinking that when you are going through a disaster is not the time for you to try to go through this that's right that's so this right. is going to be a document I think that we need to be putting out often so we sent out this special um uh we sent out a special news release a newsletter a special edition newsletter with this in it but we're going to continue to share that so we hope that you all will sign up for the newsletter get this information and and disperse it share yeah. it please please this is please a game share changer it. for us this it is really is sure it really is us. and um yeah we definitely want to get the information and we'll get it out Kind of get it into our system. That oh, housing, affordable housing is another one because of oh, COVID. Yes. We are um, we got a system down here that's working, and we yeah. are reaching just in one week 150 people. Um, Marilyn, I was just, I just had great someone in my office. That is so necessary for mm -hmm. even the Gullah Geechee corridor to think of, to to make sure that we are addressing that issue as well. Because yes. someone was just sitting in my office and, and the headlines on Hilton Head Island, a resort island, which is a historic Gullah Geechee community. Several Gullah historic neighborhoods reside there. And they talk, they just displaced 50 families. 
Mm -hmm. um, some land was sold in 50 families during the school year. Dur and I'm just thinking about the children that are caught in limbo, the families. I mean, the entire family unit is just disjointed, just all yeah. of them are in a desperate situation. Yeah. Desperate. Where are you going to rest your head? Where are you going to study as a student? Where? Um, yes. Yeah. And Where are you going to sleep? Yeah. Where are you going to sleep? Where are you going to eat? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All of that. You know about that because you've already worked with affordable housing. So mm -hmm. now we're dealing with people that have been faced, are facing homelessness. And so um, someone sat in my office and said, you know, how, what is the Gullah Geechee Corridor? How are you going to help support this community and others like it that face challenges like this. It was a private owner's land and they were selling the land and they got notice, I think 30 days notice. That's deplorable. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. um, to up yeah, so that's yeah. something that is, that is necessary. Um, we also, the Gullah Chamber, I have folks because they know we collaborate with the NAACP. Mm -hmm. And that's why collaborative partnerships are so important. We are not the experts in housing, but we give you. Do you know them. We know people Absolutely here. Know them. And I, um, just this last week, I know I've been contacted by at least three people who, I guess, for lack of a better term, have been evicted, um, right. have no place to go because on a regular day, our inventory of affordable housing is slow. So now that you're evicting people, where are they going to go? A, this is an emergency, a state of emergency in that it community. It is. It is. And it's, it's, um, I, I've mm -hmm. no, I've known this in an intellectual sense, mm -hmm. but to see, I mean, yeah, it just to see it in reality. And I knew it, but just to have it really just confronted with me, um, it's, we are, you're right. You said the right word. We are state in a state of emergency. Of state of emergency and that is even something that can go to my in my opinion because it's such large numbers being displaced yeah it should be and, and affordable housing inventory is already at low crisis level or non-existent yeah. yes or non-existent so, so yeah, yeah we have to make sure that we're you know fostering that public awareness as as we as we're doing or trying to do and continue to do and then continue to help you know, enhance the quality of the life for our people. We're, you know, protecting them, preserving them, and, and just uplifting them. That is uplifting correct. Uplifting them. That is so, correct. That is correct. But it's it. that's why this is a game changer with yeah. FEMA. Because that that's, is. And that, that um increased the impact of the lack mm -hmm. of affordable housing. Um, yeah, and so more. organizations like the Gullah Geechee Corridor we're supposed to be, we work with local, state, and federal, you know, government. So this is a perfect, you know, partnership. We already partner with the National Park Service. We do things with NOAA. We do things with, well, a lot of the organizations and now even FEMA. So USDA as well. So we want our communities to, to reach out to us, our community members to reach out to us when they need help and advocacy. That's right. That's right. And you're welcome. You're welcome. This is why we have these conversations and and they have a, the corridor has a Facebook page, a website where you can go and get this information. And, mm -hmm. and we try to share it on the chamber, um, social media and, of course, a gathering place. Mm -hmm. What's going on and the more outlets we have sharing information, the more people will know. And we encourage you, as Victoria already did, uh, once you get the information, you share it too. Don't hold right. on to the information. You share it with your community, your friends, neighbors, and families also. Mm -hmm. the more we have a responsibility. We all have a responsibility to one another. It takes a village, right? Yes, it does. Yes, it does. I want to say, so Mayor McClary, once again, thank you. We got Andrews on the list. Yes. <laughs> Andrews, you are on the list with the FEMA, hosting FEMA and getting that information and everything. Um, I love so, that. I love so, we, that so, so we talked about FEMA and y'all, we have a list. We, 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 got, talk, we got stuff to talk about. We got oh. stuff to talk about. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, so you said, what's coming up on the horizon? What do yeah. we need to know that the commission is doing? Um, well, thank you. Share with folks. 
thank you. Thank you for asking that question. There's some, some fun stuff and then there's some serious stuff. So, so in September, well, today, number one, August 31st is the International Day for People of African Descent. And we are part of that. We are the Gullah Geechee people. One of the things that we did, we worked with the United Nations some time ago. I want to say um, 2014. And we put together a documentary with the United Nations talking about ancestral land. So today is one of the days that we are celebrating our African ancestry. And today is the international day for that. So we want to just shout that out. And if you want to learn more about it, you can go to um, the United Nations and Google International. Um, well, we're in a decade, an international decade for the people of African descent. And that's going to end in 2024. So, so we're in it. So we're in the midst. Oh, oh yes, yeah, it's, it's starting to wrap up. So we really do need to go to the United Nations website and learn more. Mm -hmm. So let me ask you this. Mm -hmm. Is this tied into the United Nations 17 Sustainable Development Goals? You know, it is actually. I, you know, I don't know. I know that it's part of the United, it's an outcome of their goals, but I don't know if it's those specific ones. They don't do anything, any document document documentaries or things at this level if it does not fall in line with their goals as an agency as a united nations um so they're not going to do that so i know but i'm not sure if it's that one specifically okay all right very good then, so those who don't know about the 17 sustainable development goals mm -hmm. i encourage you to go to the united nations website and look up those goals because a lot of what we do has a community and who we are has a community ties into those 17 sustainable development goals. And, Whether we uh, know it or not. That's Whether right. We know that's it or right. not. That's yeah. right. And there's opportunity for greater education and knowledge once you start tapping into those 17 sustainable development goals. And you're right. A lot of us aren't aware of those goals, but I do encourage folks to go to the United Nations and find out. Um, when I started the chamber, that is actually one of, I tied into the 17 sustainable development goals. Not Which all of commendable. them. <laughs> Not all of them, but yeah. Um, but there were about three or four that I picked out, The especially environmental. Um, right. Absolutely. Development, rural poverty, et cetera, um, mm -hmm. that I tapped into. So I think more and more people need to know about those. So very good. And um and then very so, good that we're celebrating today. The today. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So um in our last well, I'm gonna go over some some things that are coming up in September and October. Okay. So we got, of course, we're working we've been in the peripheral um sitting in on some of the planning sessions for the slave dwelling project happening September eighth through the tenth. Mm -hmm. So if you don't know about that, catch some learning. Um, uh, that's with um, Joseph McGill and many others. So check out that conference. I'm, we're going to be serving on a, a panel um, in the opening for that. So then um, we also have, like we already mentioned, our Gullah Geechee Corridor meeting September 23rd and 24th in North mm -hmm. Carolina. And then you have already mentioned the Gullah Geechee Rice, I mean, Fish and Grits Festival, October 1st. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're, that, we're yeah, one of we, the supporters of that as well. So that's one thing that we're doing. We have to help support our community or um, festivals because this is a way that we can educate ourselves about what what we who we are, and then also the greater public. So it's really important. The founder of that festival, Miss Latrice Bush, a Gullah Geechee native, and so we're really happy to be able to help lift her up. Definitely. And if you want to know mm -hmm. more, you can go to our past Sunday's mm -hmm. show of A Gathering Place. She was our special guest talking about the Fish and Grits Festival. And we're mm -hmm. going to have it on our social media, the link to their website. But definitely she is doing a wonderful job with the Fish and Grits Music Festival. Absolutely. And, and I got this oh, amazing oh, 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 we got some merchandise. <laughs> There's a little glare on it. But Fish and Grits mugs swag bags yep go and support that merchandise that's right 
Uh, so we're really proud of her. We're really proud of the work that she's doing to, to share um, the, the cultural arts and the, through music. So then in October, also we have um, Dr. Eric Crawford, who is the author of Gullah Spirituals. Mm -hmm. I'm going to pull it down off the bookshelf. Gullah Spirituals by Dr. Eric Crawford, put out by USC Press. He's going to be doing a book talk in the Charleston area. It is at a site of enslavement. Okay. It's at the Middleton Place. And we felt like that was important because sometimes all too often we don't feel welcome in places like that. I feel like we need to take it on as a sacred site, a reverent site, and, and show our presence there. McL uh, Middleton, I love McLeod and what they, the work they do there. I'm getting to learn the other sites as well so that we can help educate our people about who built the planet, those sites of enslavement. So when you go to a place like Middleton, you see these beautiful, amazing gardens. And what I see is the people who built it, our ancestors. I see their magnificence, but I also see the wealth that was created by forest and free labor. And so uh, we're going there to educate people about the families, the descendants, that are there and then also talk about um, this book, Gullah Spirituals. Yeah, and you know, this is very important. And it is. I had him on the show also, and there's yeah. actually, um, well, I think it's, I'm not using the right term probably, non copyrighted music on YouTube that you can find that. Um, they're Gullah Spirituals, but we were listening to one during the show because, of course, he told me. Go to YouTube and look this up. So I had the music and you could hear, and we did discuss this, the roots in our Gullah spirituals, you can hear the roots of bluegrass, the roots of blues, the roots of jazz. And it is Gullah spirituals, the sound of freedom and protest, but it's also the roots of many other American genres which indicates how very foundational the Gullah community is. And you hear it in our music. You hear it in our music. And yes. songs such as We Shall Overcome that came out of Charleston at the Cigar Factory protest. There you um, go. And then, and then it was taken and it was made national. And then it became international. Um, right. Kumbaya, um, a Gullah spare joke, which mm -hmm. went national then it became mm -hmm. international and it all is rooted in our Gala spirituals. It's Michael Rowe, the boat ashore. Yes. Michael yes. Rowe, the boat ashore originated in our Gala communities. So yeah. I have to tell you a funny story about that, Victoria. Please. Ron, our, our fellow friend, Ron Days. Mm -hmm. <laughs> At Brook Green Gardens. I told, yeah, Brook Green Gardens. I, the day after I told him his story, called me still laughing about it. But I learned Michael Rowe, the boat ashore in Catholic school. Oh, yes. We weren't, we weren't taught that it was gala. It was rooted in gala. So I'm singing this thinking it's a Catholic song that I learned in Catholic school. So it speaks to a whole bunch of stuff. Why? But when the verse, uh, Sister Mary fixed the sail. Sister yes. I always had this image in my mind of the nun in full garb with the black, you know, the full nun garb on a boat fixing a sail because that's mm -hmm. how I was taught this song in Catholic school. Right. And that cracked him up. And, you know, and of course, years later, I learned that this is a song. Of course, we sang it in church. You went to Catholic school, but then you went to AME Baptist Church. Absolutely. We were singing yeah. in church too, but no yeah. one. And it, and it shows the importance of us being intentional. There you go. Teaching our children the truth. Our, the truth. And it, <laughs> yeah, they, it wasn't done in a negative way. No, no, it they just didn't know. Yeah, it, it is was very casual. It's like you learned it, you learned it in church, but no one really thought 
to yeah. say to children, you need to understand why you're learning this song. It wasn't it's really important, later. Marilyn. Yeah, it's really and important. The prime example. And I love that me. Dr. Crawford has done this research to to share more of our contributions. Yeah, and even That's more will be coming important. out. I, I would like for you to even look at, ooh, Andrews Heritage Festival, October fourteenth and fifteenth. Yes, sir. I've got it, Mayor McCleary. And send both of us, Mary McClare, more information and flyers so we can make sure that we share it on our social media. And, yeah, let us know. We do tabling. We do art activities and education on the culture. So if we're available um, and we're not somewhere else, um, we'd definitely love to attend and, and set up something to, to share more about the culture. To the point that you are making about um, our contributions, we haven't even touched on maritime culture. That's right. Mm -hmm. So I really would like for you to bring on at some point the um, rice, the um, what was it the rice culture project, the rice um, with, with Dr. Jonathan Kimball Green and Jonathan Green. I would love to have them on. Yeah. Oh. So Dr. Kimlong, if you, they would love to come on and talk about um, Gullah culture, rice culture, and maritime culture. And so much within the maritime culture has contributed to America, to the to the whole entire economy along our Atlantic coast. Not just slave people, enslaved people, the slave trade, much more. Much more. And as you know, we And are, we built that economy. Yeah. So there's so much yes. research that they are doing. Now, if you go to the website, you're gonna see a lot of beautiful things that you can purchase. This is a much deeper organization that is that that is much beyond their website. So when you go there, don't just feel like, oh wow, you know, they're just selling things. They're much more than that. So and it's me, huge. It's mm -hmm. it's huge because you know, just briefly, you know, we're working on the Gala Get Your Seafood Trail and the mm -hmm. grant we receive is to preserve the Gala yes. Maritime Heritage. Right. And so year one, we're actually wrapping up year one today. And okay. it's been a year of content gathering and it mm -hmm. We're barely scratching. collecting stories. We're collecting stories that need to be collected, but it's just the beginning. And I tell people, this is just the beginning. Mm -hmm. This is going to mm -hmm. last way beyond. I would love, I would us. love to share a story about us living off the water. Okay. And how that was necessary for us to be able to not only sustain our family, but our whole entire community, because there were elders that could not work the land and harvest their food or grow their food. So we would share. And the same thing, as soon as we brought, my father would go fishing, he would put this whole seafood bounty on the table and we would have to scale the fish, gut the fish, clean it, pull out the squid, um, sort the shrimp, um, get the flounder, the whiting, the, the mullet fush. I said fush, I just say mullet fush. I got you. <laughs> Yeah, and, and y'all, that's the fish. correct way to pronounce it, too. Fish. There you go. <laughs> so, and then my father would put us in the back of the, in the station wagon, and we would see and witness my father dropping off seafood and bags of freshly harvested food to people that could no longer do it. It's really, really, really important for us to take care of our community members. Um, and COVID has reintroduced us to that. People it, that have been suffering um, uh, with food scarcity. That's right. That's right. Insecurity. And, yeah. It, it mm -hmm. opened and revealed a lot of stuff. It did. And, and it's just it the beginning of us reconnecting change. And it's been all along, but I think COVID really peeled back a lot of layers. It really did. Um, I want to add a story. We talk about community. With okay. We've had focus groups and we've had interviews. And these focus groups have had moments where I'm just... On the edge of but crime. One was when we had our Charleston focus group and we had some folks from Edisto Island and they told the story of how the baby's newborns were announced. It didn't matter what time of day, two o'clock in the morning, they would announce a birth of a baby on Edisto Island with drums. And they knew that the sound oh. carries across water. So, so yeah. yeah. 
this is how you have to understand the low country and these sea islands. It's a lot of water. We are in water. That's why mm -hmm. we're low country. We're in the water. Oh, yeah. So they understood that the water, the sound would travel across the water, and then someone else would pick it up, and they would pick, play their drums, and then that sound would travel, and the next person would pick it up until it carried across the entire island. Wow. And that's how they announced the birth of newborn that babies. That is so beautiful. I I, I don't think I'm having any more children, but <laughs> <laughs> if, if God sees so fit to, to make that happen or someone in my family, I think, wow, that's such a beautiful tradition. Or maybe it's like, to... you know, I, might, I might get a new puppy. Can you like play the drums? But, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, um, just... yeah, can we share that? Wow, mm. that is beautiful. I thought you were going to mm. give me something sad, but that is so no, no, and, and, it, and it ties into the music. It ties into the gutter spirituals and they knew that it tied back to our West African roots. Mm. I mean, it wasn't just- Just think about at thing. night, how clear your voice can carry at nighttime. And then if it's at night over the water, it's like mm -hmm. talking to someone on a telephone, maybe. That's you know, right. I, I would think, I'm thinking, you know, I don't know, but so there's a few more things happening. I don't yeah, know how much time share you have. Us. Please share. Uh, let me so, know. We have 10 minutes. So the Gullah Spirituals book talk is going to be at Middleton Place on October 16th. And they have that on their website. And we also have that in our newsletter. Um, we're working to do um, a Daughters of the Dust community screening. I think we're partnering with the Penn Center on October 21st. And of course, Sapelo Island, Georgia. Sapelo Island has their cultural day, October 22nd. They're selling tickets now. That ticket will include the ferry ride on and off the island because they want you to come and visit as a tourist, but they also want you to leave. <laughs> so <don't, laughs> you can stay overnight. We, you can we, stay we're overnight. Happy to see you come and we have to we're see happy. you leave. Yeah. Yay. <laughs> we're glad we glad if for see Anna. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And glad if for see you to go. So <laughs> then there's also the Coastal Georgia Tourism Conference that's taking place October 27th. You can pull that up. Um, um, and so we have had our office, our first um, Gullah Geechee Corridor business office was on Johns Island in the Charleston area of South Carolina, because I know you got people calling in, watching from all over. Mm -hmm. And so we were really happy to have that space for some time. And I got a phone call from one of our representatives and um, I hadn't even taken on the executive director job yet. They said, what do you think about moving the base of operations to Beaufort, South Carolina to help build um, economic tourism? I was like, well, I'm not mad because I'm from Beaufort County and, and the commute would be a lot easier and just be from St. Helena Island into Beaufort. And, but it took some time to be able to gain some partnerships and support to do that. So we're really, really happy that um, um, one of our funders, which we will announce um, um, a little bit later, <laughs> um, was able to provide us some startup funding to move the office. And we are in the historic Beaufort Arsenal where the Beaufort Visitor Center is and where the Beaufort History Museum is. So we have a space in this in this historic site. Now the site's history is quite challenging and we wanna share that history as well. So when you come, um, you see a fortification. And part of this history does have to do with building armaments and was built in 1798. So it does have a little bit of history to do with after, you know, with the American Revolution, that kind of thing. and. But then also it housed our ancestors who did not have proper documentation when they were enslaved. Now, when I look at this building, it also reminds me of the slave fortresses on the west coast of Africa. Mm. It has a castle-like feel to it. It has a second story that looks down into a courtyard. Um, and so I don't know if that's, you know, I know it, it's going to have some history that we need to share and unpack. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But we need to claim these spaces and claim them and tell the full stories. 
So I don't know all of the history, but we're, we're working with some researchers with the National Park Service. In this space, we are not the National Park Service, but the National Park Service is a major partner of ours. We have a cooperative agreement with the National Park Service. We get funding from the Department of the Interior. Very little funding, um, but we're very grateful for it. So then in our office space, we house the chief historian for the National Park Service for Reconstruction Park here and the chief interpreter um, of the park. So we're really happy to have that partnership. We partner with all of our parks across the nation, but most immediately within the Gullah Geechee Corridor, national seashores, national sites, all of that. So we're really happy about the space that we're in. So to celebrate that and to announce it in a bigger way, we're having a grand opening on Friday, October 28th with the opening of the space, but a street fair. Well, we're praying. We're praying for a street fair, but definitely the courtyard will be opened up to the public on Saturday, October 29th, and we're inviting everyone to come and shut down Beaufort. <laughs> um, yeah, we can do that. Beaufort, South Carolina, that is, because <laughs> we do have a, a Beaufort. Uh, North, North Carolina. Carolina. So we have that. And then, of course, tour the Plannersville and Cultural Festival is also taking place on October 29th. And we are fully supporting that taking place where? Uh, in Plannersville, in Georgetown right. County, in the Plannersville community. And it's mm -hmm. the Plannersville Scenic Byway. And it supports mm -hmm. the Village Group, uh, mm -hmm. an educational literacy uh, uh, nonprofit in Georgetown mm -hmm. County in the planners. But Street. I skipped a date also, October 15th, another event. Oh, yes, the Gullah Geechee Environmental and Energy uh, Conference. It's going to be hybrid. It's in Georgetown, and registration actually opens tomorrow. I, um, I need that. If you can email that to me so we can put that in our newsletter. I will I definitely we'll have email it. that to you. I'll okay. email you the updated. That's the okay. same the date that we were sharing. I'll okay. email you the updated flyer. And um, we're going to be focusing on electric vehicles and Ooh. electric vehicle charging stations rollout, which um, right now the timeline, the focus is having that rollout of charging stations mm -hmm. along interstates. Well, we don't oh, have yeah. an interstate. We have 17. Yes. And then 26 comes in. But mm -hmm. what if the, we want to give advocacy training so our community can have an opportunity to tap into the potential of charging stations. There's a lot going on with mm. funding and opportunity. But if we don't know, we can't ta tap into that opportunity. So we're working with um, the South Carolina Electric Vehicle uh infrastructure committee and mm -hmm. the federal government to share that information. We're going to be talking to black farmers and community gardens, okay. aquaponics, backyard mm -hmm. aquaponics, mm -hmm. and we're going to talk about water quality. I'm, we're focusing on like developing citizen scientists. That there you go. Your own water, your air quality. Because is, is that with NOVA and Nia Rose? Dr. Nia, well, soon to be Dr. Nia Rose or... We have had conversations. It's hey, also um, some other folks. It's so good yeah, that we're getting lot. this out there in our communities. We need that. Yeah. We, need that. Have, we, need, we need the clean water testing, monitoring, because there are people that rely on these waterways for sustenance, morning, noon, right. and night. And then also that's for right. recreation. And so it's really important for us to know what we're putting in our bodies and exactly and how to keep our environment healthy. Exactly. And we have situations, I know probably in the last two days, people have heard about Jackson, Mississippi. They totally don't mm -hmm. have water. Right. Have, could not even use it before it just disappeared. Mm -hmm. But we had that in South Carolina too, Denmark, South Carolina. And with rising mm -hmm. water, because of climate change, it's going to impact our fresh water. Okay. So you need, we need to be on top of it. So okay. we're made that request. Well, thank you for sharing that about Denmark. I think I missed that. Yeah, Denmark, South Carolina has had a water problem for years. Okay. Mm -hmm. but, so there's um, a couple of more things on the horizon. And I'm not, how much time do we have? We have two minutes. So 
In our last <laughs> newsletter, August newsletter, we announced our educational consultant. And she's going to be leading, um, helping us develop a, a program for a year on our Culture Keepers um, educational program. That's where we are, go, of course, going to be going in depth into our county schools with a, um, with, with what well, we do that anyway, but in a little bit um, uniform way. And then also um, in soon um, developing a fellowship for teachers, teach teachers program. So it's all under the Gullah Geechee, all under the Gullah Geechee Culture Keepers Initiative program that we have. And then also developing a volunteer program because we need volunteers. The Gullah Geechee Corridor needs volunteers. So if you're interested, um, whether that's going to be in North Carolina, any part of South Carolina, we do talk a lot about South Carolina because it has most of the square miles within the corridor. So we're not leaving out Florida and we're not leaving out North Carolina, but definitely South Carolina and Georgia does get a, a lot of attention. So we want to make sure that we have support um, because we only have a few number of commissioners in those areas that are already working on initiatives. So we need volunteers in every I, capacity. I'm so glad you mentioned volunteers because earlier in the show, I said, I'm going to ask you that question. Can mm -hmm. you volunteer with the commission has a volunteer, not has someone planning something, but a volunteer with the commission to help the commission do it. So work. we got two things. So we got the federal commissioners mm -hmm. and then we have the Gullah Geechee Corridor. So you can definitely vol volunteer with the corridor. Being a, um, Maybe there's a commissioner that might need some assistance within their area, but typically we are those people that provide that technical support to our commissioners. Um, but volunteering for the Gullah Geechee Cultural Heritage Corridor, yes. Okay. Please. Now, the Gullah Geechee Corridor Federal Commissioners are volunteers. They don't get paid. They don't get paid. Um, they're huge contributors to our match for our federal grant from the National Park Service. They So anytime they mention Gullah Geechee Corridor in the elevator, on the telephone call, on the email, they're doing work in concert. Um, we get to claim those hours towards our match for our um, federal grant. So they are already volunteering. And so we're really looking forward to launching that volunteer program, all under Culture Keepers. We're Very also good. going to be, in 2023, we're also gonna be launching our climate forum programs in each state, and then also land preservation forums and workshops. So I wanted to try to get one um, and with one of our partners, Minority Landowners Magazine. If you don't know them, Marilyn, they're out of Raleigh, but they do work throughout the South, throughout the South, even into Texas. They put out a magazine, and I think it would be great for you and I to, to put a, a, an ad in their paper. The Gullah Geechee Chamber of Commerce and the Gullah Geechee Corridor together so that when they distribute those magazines, um, we have some representation and people will know where to come and who we are, where to visit, and to uplift our communities in an economically um, sustainable way. So there's Let's those things that are very, very important because we've gone into our communities for our, our Gullah Geechee public meetings. That's it. Our Gullah Geechee um, public meetings, we've, we are hearing people and their needs. Also, the land program, we do have the Gullah Geechee strategic uh, the strategic plan to promote preservation of Gullah Geechee land ownership in the Gullah Geechee Cultural Heritage Corridor. So we want to reintroduce this plan of action uh, to our communities. It was funded by the Dorothy and um, Gaylord and Dorothy Donnelly Foundation. So we need to put this out in the community, go over what it means. Also hear from best practices that are happening within the corridor. For example, what you see every year, Minority Landowner Magazine will ask us to nominate a Gullah Geechee farmer um, to be recognized for the work that they do. Now, um, USDA, Natural Resource um, Resources, Conservation Resources, who else works with them? I'm trying to think. <laughs> USDA is a big supporter. Um, so when they, they, they receive these magazines and they see these farmers, doing great work 
And this magazine does an annual conference. They do high tunnel um, installations on land. So if there are farmers that you know within the corridor, um, we can um, introduce them to um, these workshops. We're trying to plan one in Lincolnville, South Carolina. That is in the center of Somerville, South Carolina. We haven't worked out everything to confirm it, but we just also want to educate people to keep your land productive, profitable, and for your heirs for the future generations. That's right. Um, That's what does right. that look like? You don't have to sell your land. There's a gentleman on Hilton Head Island that leases his land to a responsible resort. And when I say responsible, they're responsible to the people, the culture, and the environment. Very good. And so he has a 99-year contract with the resort. He's not going to be alive. So his next descendants get to decide after that lease ends on how they want to move forward with their land, whether to continue or not. So there's a lot of best practices out there. There's a lot of resources we need to share. And we're just we're just really, really looking forward to, to oh, we have our Gullah Geechee Commissioner, Veronica Hemingway. She says, yeah. everyone should learn about the history in Lincolnville, amazing history. So they have just, um, they're one of our official partners that we have not yet announced publicly, but the commissioners have vetted their application and they are now an official partner. partner. So it's the Lincolnville um, Historic and Preservation Society that's doing great work to preserve the land and to educate the people about the history and the culture there. And also, they've been added to the Reconstruction Era National Historic Network because Lincolnville was founded by Gullah Geechee folks and it yep. still has Black political leadership today since yep. the founding of, uh, of that place. Um, wow, in the 1860s or late, eight, I will, I, I'm going to get that wrong. 1880s? I used to know it, so I'm not going to jump into that either because I'll be wrong. Yeah. It's been a long time since I've had Sorry. Yeah. So ever since their founding, they've had Black political leadership. That's right. Continuously. Yes. yes. Yeah. Continuous. So we're really happy about that. I went over my two minutes. I'm so sorry. Well, that's all right, because what you're talking about is a good way to end it, because I'm okay. going to tell you, this is why you need to come back. <laughs> because even these topics, the minority land owners, Lincolnville, we need to talk about the partnerships and how they work and yeah. and the impact of these partnerships. So so we're going to leave it as a teaser because okay. we filled an hour. We feel yeah. a little over. We'll an hour. talk about partnerships the next time, how that works, what it looks like, what are the benefits, who we are partnering with, and how we every program we do is only in concert in collaboration with at least two partners. We start with two and we probably grow to like 10. Yeah. So let's talk about that. Yeah, we definitely want to talk about that because that's this it's huge. Um mm -hmm. collaborative partnerships, the, the chamber. We can't do the work that we do if we didn't have collaborative partners. Working um, in a silo is over, done with. There you go. Veronica has done her research and she's letting us know it was the 1860s. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. See, yeah, I'm, I'm going to assume that might be Google helping us there, but thank you very much. <laughs> Well, no, she's gone on the, the tour with the National Park Service. She ah, remember so she knew it. Being Go ahead. on the tour when they were doing their network tour. So she was there. All right. Very the good. Very good. Thank you, Veronica, for keeping us straight. Um, yes. Yeah. So, so, Victoria, it's been great because this is... An hour and not quite five minutes. So we're going to wrap okay. it up. And I know you have to go and I'm going to wrap it up. But thank you for coming on. You know you're coming back. Newsletter. Sign up newsletter. for the newsletter. Sign up for the newsletter. We've been scrolling the bottom of the screen the entire show, folks. Go to the website. Sign up for the newsletter so you can stay on top of everything that's happening with the Gullah Geechee Cultural Heritage Corridor. Um and everything within the communities that we're producing and creating and just sharing our culture. Um, plenty of opportunities happening, folks, and you need to be informed. So sign up for that newsletter. Victoria, anything else before we let you go? 
no, we don't kept these people long enough. I'm so glad that you all stayed with us. I look it forward to great. hearing from you all on the next show. Um, join us at the Gullah Geechee Corridor Commission meeting on September 24th, whether in person or on, online. We look forward to hearing from you. Thank you. Right. Very Thank good. You. And it was a great show. Victoria, thank, thank you. you for joining us. And you have oh, a great day. You. And we'll see you thank next you. time. Bye all right. Now. All right, everyone, as usual, Victoria Small sharing the information with us. A great show filled with great content. And as I wrap up, I just want to let everybody know, and we've already mentioned it, on Saturday, October 15th is the Gullah Geechee Environmental and Energy Conference. Um, registration will open tomorrow. Go to our website, go to our Facebook page, and you will be able to get registered. The wonderful thing about this, we are trying to lower the barriers to participation. So we will be providing lunch. Um, In-person is limited. We will be providing lunch and babysitting services. So come on out. And tomorrow, our hybrid entrepreneur course um, the, of Gullah Geechee University. The second one this year kicks off tomorrow, September 1st, in person in Bucksport, um, South Carolina, which is in Horry County, the Bucksport community. And you can also attend virtually. Just go to GullahGeecheeChamber.org or GullahGeecheeFoundation.org to register. And it's also on Eventbrite. You, so three places where you can get registered for our culturally embedded 12-week entrepreneur course. And we have coming up that um, Gullah Geechee Junkanoo at Brook Green Gardens is coming up on September 10th. Please come on out. And um, I'm sure Victoria mentioned that great entertainment food demonstrations there. Um, and then the Fish and Grits happening October 1st um, music festival. Please go to their website and purchase your ticket and whip your smartphone out really fast because we have the QR code. If you click that QR code, it'll take you right to the website. And um, But it's fishandgrits.org. Just go there and buy your tickets now. As always, we've enjoyed Victoria Smalls, the information, and we've enjoyed you. We've enjoyed you coming out and joining us um, and learning more about what's happening with the Gullah Geechee Cultural Heritage Corridor. Um, we are going to, we do have something on Sunday and, oh, we're going to be talking about vaccinations y'all on Sunday with ABLE, which they're still doing vaccinations. Um, COVID is still with us. So we want to keep our community informed about where and how and why you should be, um, um, yep. Bucksport. We love Bucksport where, how, and why you should continue to get your vaccinations. And just in the mail today, I got my free COVID home COVID testing. So um, I'm good for that for a little while further. Thank you, everybody, for joining us today. Thank you to Victoria Smalls, Executive Director of the Commission. And we look forward to having her back with us. Everybody, enjoy the rest of your day. And we'll see you Sunday at 4 o'clock.